those things that they touted was, you know, there you saw in the news clip that, and I see billboards, saw billboards all around town, you know, uh, door to dock in 30, 31 minutes. You saw the helicopter obviously on the roof there. So they were definitely trying to tap into the emergency care or, or emergent care market. Um, and, and I guess I'm hearing from you that unless you've got deep pockets, um, that you, th these doctor groups that try to get together to launch these, uh, these smaller hospitals, are, it's just not a, a fitting business plan for, for That was right a now. good gig running a surgery center or a hospital until about five, six years ago when the ACA passed, the ball started rolling in the other direction with checks and balances and criteria that needs to be met. And in any time there's a little niche where a physician group or somebody else is going to be able to capitalize on a situation, um, the insurers and the feds can keep up, catch up to it really quickly and start scrutinizing it to say, hey, this isn't what we're supposed to be doing in healthcare. We're trying to make healthcare affordable for Americans and accessible. And here we have this cash cow, uh, yet the patients can barely afford to go there. So. Um, I just don't think it's the right time to get into the hospital industry. If you've read my, my, one of my fir earlier books, Execute, a former hospital CEO tells all on what's wrong with American healthcare, what every American needs to know. We talk a lot about that transition from heads and beds to um, true a value-based model, which is an insurance model, and how drastically it's gonna impact the hospitals. And until the last year or two, I don't think hospitals really felt that. In fact. Uh, I wrote on LinkedIn, and if, if you don't follow me on LinkedIn, please do follow Dr. Josh Luke on LinkedIn. I'll follow you back. We share stories with the folks at Care National TV and others all the time. Um, write for Forbes as well. And one of my recent stories was about uh, the fact that I think what we're seeing now, looking back on the election, is mostly of the most of the large health systems nationally were in a holding pattern after the Affordable Care Act passed. They didn't want to move. Why would they move? Times have been great. They're printing money in hospitals for years and years. And the hospital lobby is very powerful, always been very successful in getting anything that worked against the hospital model to be overturned or reversed. And that just didn't happen with the Affordable Care Act. So we were waiting for a GOP majority to happen. And then it happened and the holding pattern, everybody high-fived and celebrated for a day or two and then said, wait a minute, nothing's changing, nothing's gonna change. Value-based care is here to stay. And the main reason is because there's no money left in the piggy bank. The Medicare fund is run dry. It's running dry at an alarming rate. You can't go back to a methodology where there's no checks and balances. The insurers are just taking the lead of Medicare and saying, yeah, we want to do the same thing. We want to reduce our spending. So. Mm -hmm.